Thank you for tuning in to WDRB Media, the voice of the community, the only station giving you double the information and inspiration. You're listening to Our Voices Radio, and I'm your host, Nicole, the creative midwife, trained, willing, and able to help you discover your creative voice and birth it for the world through whatever medium you choose to use. The sponsor for today's show is Our Voices LLC, a writing and editing consulting firm and entertainment studio ready to help you tell your story your way. For more information, email at ourvoicesllc at gmail.com. Today's show is about uncovering the creative voice. That's right, we're going to uncover your creative voice. First is first, dreaming. How do you hear the dream? You know, sometimes you may wake up and try to, and you realize that you've gotten all these different things all jumbled up. You have issues, you have um, things that you think about, but at the core of that is something that makes your heart beat. It's something that makes you go, man, I wish I could do that. That's you dreaming. Do you find yourself in the middle of your day-to-day, -day, middle of your, your nine-to-five, just going, man, I wish I could? It would be so cool if, wow, I wish I could do X, Y, and Z. That's the dream. That's your heart, your spirit, your soul telling you, dude, girl, there is more to life than what you're doing. You are made for so much more. That's the dream. Pay attention to it. It's telling you, hey, wake up. This is what I was born to do. Then you have to think about, well, what are you drawn to? What kind of things do you do over and over and over again? And you don't even realize that's what it is. You find yourself, perhaps you're at church, and every time you volunteer for the children, every time you volunteer, say, to be a greeter, every time you volunteer for other different things, that's calling you toward your passion. Usually what you're drawn to is what you're supposed to be doing all the time. Not just your nine to five, but every waking moment. Then you think, you think to yourself, what is, this, what is it you dream about, you daydream about? You could be in the middle watching the kids, you could be in the middle of doing X, Y, and Z, and you just go, hmm. Whatever you spend your time thinking, whatever you spend your time dreaming about, whatever you spend your time talking about, that's your heart saying, hey, do this, do this. Then the last little point is, what do you talk to your friends about? What is, what's your conversation? What are you always speaking about? That's also your heart, your spirit, your soul saying, hey, this is what I want to do. This is what we need to do. And it's just your voices giving, giving uh, well, your words giving voice to what your heart has already told you to do. That's the dream. That's you saying, hey, I wish I could do this all the time. Okay, so now we've gone beyond the dream and you get to identifying the passion. So now you've got to be specific, right? It's not just, man, wouldn't it be cool if? It's, you ask yourself, what kind of things do you do for free? And everybody tells you, you need to charge for it. What kind of things do you just say, hey, I'll volunteer for it, hey, I'll do this, hey, I'll do that, and you're not thinking about the time it's gonna take you. You're not thinking about um, that it's not hard for you to do. It's stuff you do like this, very simple, very easy. That's your passion. What kind of organizations do you join just for fun? That's part of the passion. I'm not talking about, um, you know, babysitting anonymous. I'm talking about what kind of organizations, what kind of things do you join at church? What do you join at school? What do you join uh, just in your neighborhood? What gets your blood boiling that every time you join it, you're like, yeah, I'm for this. That's your passion talking. And then what do you do with your friends and family? What, is, what do your friends and family tell you all the time about what you do, about what you say? Usually what people see, what people can comment, what people tell you think when they're positive. I'm not talking about the naysayers and the negative, the negative people. I'm talking about the positive people, the people who love you, the people who hear your conversation and say, you know, you need to do that for real. You need to do that all the time and not just play with it. That's your passion. Okay, say you found, you've got your dream, you found your passion, now you're ready to share it, pump your brakes. You don't share your dream and your passion with everybody because everybody's not for you. 
Everybody is, is not looking out for your good. Everybody is not cheering you on. You've got people out there waiting to tear you down. So that means you've got to bite your tongue, use discernment, and decide, is this a time to share my dream or should I be quiet? Is this a time to really listen or is this a time to say, you know, I always want to do X, Y, and Z. Figure out who those people are. The way you do that, you find your tribe. Who likes what you like? Those are people who are going to feed into you, who are going to be positive, who are going to have words of encouragement. Find mentors, and I don't care how old you are. Everybody needs a mentor. Everyone needs someone who's already gone down the road to say, hey, here are some pitfalls. Don't fall into those. Instead, do this over here. You want someone who's been where you've gone and can say, hey, not only is it doable, but it's exciting, and I can see your slant in it. Then you need to find your allies. These are people who are doing what you're doing, but you will allow them to tug your coattail when you're off. Because you need people to say, hey, that wasn't the best. Hey, here's a better way to do it. Hey, um, I understand that you're passionate about it, but here's a better way to talk about it. That way you're not rubbing people the wrong way. Because sometimes it's not about what you're saying, it's about how you say it. So now that you have heard your dream, you've identified your passion, and you've shared it with the right people, the next question you need to ask yourself is when to step out on faith and put action to your passion. A dream is just a dream until you put some work to it. A passion is just that until you step out on faith and make it work. So when you're ready to step out on faith, here's some things that's gonna go through your mind. You're gonna get tired of the J-O-B, which really just means just over broke. Your job is just over broke, plain and simple, for the most part. When you're tired of it, when you realize your time means more than just the J-O-B, you're ready to step out on your passion. Have you hit the glass ceiling one too many times? For all of my executive people, for all of my people who are at those wonderful executive jobs, but you just can't get to director, you just can't get past manager, you just can't get to executive VP, perhaps you're not supposed to be executive VP of somebody else's business, but you're supposed to be executive VP of your own. And that means stepping out on faith, using your passion, and making it work. Perhaps when you're going to the job, you're bored. And, bored, and you're bored blending in with the crowd. You have all these gifts, all these talents, all this passion. Perhaps you're on a job that would allow you to do these different things, but your immediate supervisor only wants so much. They don't want all that you have to give. They only want a little bit of it. Hey, I've been guilty of it. I've worked at jobs where I've been so excited and wanted to pour my all into, and all they really wanted was a tenth of a sliver of what I could truly provide. And I got bored. And I can't tell you how many times I've bumped my head on ceilings when I realized I could be doing somebody else's job, but that's not what I was being paid for. I can't tell you how many times I have spoken with the wrong people about my, about my vision and my passion, <laughs> and even a few ran off with it and did it. But I serve a God who always gives me more witty inventions than I could ever dream or imagine. So he's always giving me more stuff. And then I just had to learn, girl, shut your mouth. Quit telling everybody. Everybody's not for you. Quit blending in with the crowd. You weren't made to blend in. You were made to stand out. Tired of hitting your head? Have you bumped your head one too many times? Girl, let go. Let go and enjoy. Let go and find the thing that makes your heart pump. Let go and find the thing that makes you get up at 3.30 in the morning. Because trust and believe, I've been doing that lately and have been having so much fun. Get to a place to where you realize life is too short to be bored. Life is too short to blend in. Life is too short to keep hitting your head on the glass ceiling. Life is too short not to use your own creative gifts, not to use your own creative voice. Be bold, be boss, and make it happen. When we come back, we will continue our discussion on uncovering the creative voice. You're listening to Our Voices Radio, and I'm your host, Nicole, the creative midwife. You're tuned in to WDRB Media, the voice of the community, the only station giving you double the information and inspiration. We'll be right back after the break. If you 
Welcome back to WDRB Media. 
the voice of the community, and those streaming live through free TuneIn Radio app and through iHeartRadio. You're listening to Our Voices Radio, and I'm your host, Nicole, the Creative Midwife. If you're just tuning in, we're discussing uncovering the creative voice on Our Voices Radio. And I'm your host, Nicole, the creative midwife, trained, willing, and able to help you discover your creative voice and birth it for the world through whatever medium you choose to use. In the last segment, I spoke about hearing the dream, identifying the passion, sharing the dream, and putting action to your passion. Now, in this segment, we must train. Training. I've heard so many pros and cons. Uh, when I was coming up, training meant you went to school after high school. There was always college, and my father called it getting the sheepskin. He was very serious about each of his children, myself, my sister, and my brother, getting that piece of paper that says, hey, we have our bachelor's degree. So for us in a certain generation, that was the supposed, that was the thing to do. Now the world has changed. You've got all kinds of different schools to go to, all kinds of training, which people should do because there's only so much training you can do in high school. High school, you're just getting some foundation down. You're kind of figuring it out. Then beyond, beyond high school, you have other types of training. There's training on the job. There's training for community colleges. There's, they're bringing back apprenticeships. There's all kind of training that you can do. When you're in school, you have to go look for internships because there's only so much the school can give you. You've got to figure out how to do it in the real world. And then for those of us who have done the school thing, there's something called an externship. That means when you're just about finished with school, there's another internship that you've got to do. It's the last one you do, either right after you graduate or just before you graduate from getting your bachelor's degree. They're called externships. I had, I had one when I was coming out of grad school, just so I understood the different things that I needed to do for film. For right now, when I was in Los Angeles, there are other things that you can do once that you've done your, um, once you're out on the job. There are places in LA, it's called Screenwriting and TV Writing, Organization of Black Screenwriters. That was a place when I was a young uh, screenwriter right out of film school, I went and found OBS and found other like-minded individuals who were interested in film and working in the industry. Online, there's something called onthepage.tv with Pilar Alessandra. Pilar, P-I-L-A-R, Alessandra, A-L-E-S-S-A-N-D-R-A. She is fantastic if you are interested in writing for, for film or for television. She does everything online. She started out in Los Angeles in terms of having things in a classroom that you can go to, but now she does her classes online and you can find her there. If you're in Charlotte and you're uh, into playwriting, go to the African-American Playwrights Group with Vicki L. Evans. This is a group that I'm personally a part of. We talk about everything under the sun as it deals with theater. It is one of those places for training. It's one of those places for advice. It's one of those places for like-minded individuals. Online, there's something called Theater Folks of Color. That's F-O-L-X of color. It's, they have a Facebook page. I joined that recently. Why? Because I want to find out who's doing what here in this area. Who's doing what when it comes to theater and joining with other like-minded individuals. I haven't been in grad school for over 20 years, haven't been in undergrad for almost 30, but I am always looking for people who are doing what I do. The other thing that you want to do is part of training is invest in yourself and what that looks like practically. So practically, I took myself to grad school. Once I got there, I was able to get a full ride in terms of education. But that's investing in myself. Another way to invest in yourself is buying the proper equipment. You know you need a new laptop. You know you need a new phone. You know you need some type of tablet. You know that you don't have the software to do what you want to do in terms of your passion. Get the money, make it happen. Other thing, adult classes, workshops, they're online and they're in person. The next thing, go back and get those certifications. If you know you wanna climb higher in your, in your particular business, get the certifications that you need. It will just look, it'll look better on your resume. It will also attract the people who want you to do their business because they realize that you're up to date with the latest things that are going on. Networking, yeah, the evil end. Thumbs up or thumbs down? Well. Thumbs up, gotta tell you, because that's where you meet people. That's where you can practice saying, hi, I'm a writer. I do blah, 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 blah. Hi, I am a stylist. I've styled for so-and-so. Whatever it is that you do, networking helps you push that. 
The last thing that you need to do is join professional groups and organizations. Are they really worth it? Yes. I'm a member of the Dramatist Guild out of New York City, where I've been able to connect with others who are doing theater. After the break, we'll wrap up our discussion on uncovering the creative voice. You're tuned in to WDRB Media, the voice of the community, the only station giving you double the information and inspiration. Don't go anywhere because we'll be right back. You fill me up. Strength for the journey Always enough When I am lonely, you're there Everything I need Love all around me You'll never leave me alone When I'm ready to give, Lord, you won't let me go You keep Holding me when I'm ready to give Lord, you won't let me go You keep holding me Hey, still at the end Right where I was You came to find me Dependable God You've been a friend <laughs> I can count on you, you Never deny me your name Welcome back to WDRB Media, the voice of the community, and those streaming live through free tune-in radio app and through iHeartRadio. You're listening to Our Voices Radio, and I'm your host, The Creative Midwife. If you're just tuning in, we're discussing un uncovering the creative voice on Our Voices Radio, and I'm your host, The Creative Midwife. Trained, willing, and able to help you discover your creative voice and birth it through the world through whatever medium you choose to use. In the last segment, I spoke about training, investing in ourselves, and networking. The bottom line is this. Until you take stock in your skills, dreams, and passions, you will never live the outstanding life that God has planned for you. Yes, I am a Christian woman on the grind, and I know that without him, I couldn't fly very high or be of any use to people around me. But even being someone committed to God's plan for my life, I need to feed my mind and spirit with real inspiration. So folks, today... I'm gonna share my bookshelf. 
That's right, I have books by authentic creative voices that for those of you out there who are looking for inspiration, I have it for you. This one is an oldie but a goodie. It's called Having What Matters, The Black Woman's Guide to Creating the Life You Really Want by Monique Greenwood. She is an accomplished author, entrepreneur, former editor of Essence Magazine, and the CEO of Aquaba Bed and Breakfast Inns. The next one that inspired me to take my latest leap of faith is called Year of Yes, How to Dance It Out, Stand in the Sun, and Be Your Own Person by Shonda Rhimes, who is the executive producer of hit TV shows like Grey's Anatomy, Private Practice, and Scandal. So join us next week as we continue our discussion with part two of Uncovering the Creative Voice. I want to thank everyone for tuning in. Continue to tune in every Friday at 2.30 p.m. Please remember to connect with me by going to WDRmedia.com. Click on the Radio Shows tab and go to Our Voices Radio page. Also, if you want to be a guest on the show or want free advertising, reach me on my website at NicoleMPalmer.com. That's N-I-C-H-O-L-E. You've been listening to Our Voices Radio, and I'm your host, the Cre Nicole, the creative midwife, on WDRB Media, the voice of the community, for double the information and inspiration. Until next week, thanks and peace. And remember, in the end, you must write the vision and make it plain. Told you that you couldn't do it cause you washed up Ain't like them bad girls said you should get your sauce up But I got this plan and you might not understand I'ma go hard as I can and I'm gonna be the boss of it and Just watch me do this, put no limits, only swag on it Walk right up to the front where I belong and brag on it Go to the top, I'ma give it all I got Might take a lot, but we ain't gonna let us But I don't let it break me Cause I'm still on my way I